Greetings, Internet. I am Danny Danger, and I am here with the amazing, the fabulous, the talented, Kate Leth. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, so this Wednesday, the 26th, Kate will be at Austin Books and Comics signing her new Adventure Time-themed comic, Seeing Red, which she wrote uh, and did not draw this time. How is that different for you, just writing a story? Um, it was super different. I've never done that before, and... Uh, it was kind of like um, a leap of faith, I suppose, to, to write something down and have somebody else draw it. But I had read the first two graphic novels that, um, that Zach drew, that Danielle Corsetto wrote, and they were really awesome. And I love his take on the world, and he draws things very animated and, and really fun. So I kept that in mind a lot when I was writing. And it just ended up being so much fun. It was kind of neat. I mean, you write this story and it's this complete arc, and you spend all these weeks working on it, and then you hand it in, and then a couple months later, you get back a graphic novel. <laughs> and it's it's kind of amazing. Like, it was a really, really exciting thing. I was just sitting there reading through it, cackling. <laughs> so, yeah, it was awesome. It was I liked it a lot more than I was expecting to. Was it difficult or more difficult writing a longer-running story than your usual short strips? Definitely. I've always written short. Um, I'm a short story person. Um, fun fact, when I was about 16, I had a live journal specifically dedicated to writing erotic short fiction. Yes! <laughs> that was uh, a time. Um, but, no, it was really different, and it's a lot harder, and it takes a lot more discipline to write something long form, and especially when you want it to be a really cohesive arc, and you want things to tie in together really well and be really satisfying, so... You know, it's a lot of work, but I, I enjoyed the challenge, um, and I would totally do it again. So someday when you're a famous comic book author or writer, or more fa famous and prolific, do we get to read your erotica that you'll, <laughs> that you'll release no. for an obscene no, amount of money? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> it was so terrible. <sighs> I mean, you can't ever have nice things. <laughs> there was one really good story about a girl um, pleasuring herself, let's say, uh, in warm laundry and very specifically like getting into the description of how wonderful warm laundry is. That was so weird as a teenager. That makes doing laundry so much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to owe you a, a, in the past thank you for that one. <laughs> I can't even be like, don't tell Adventure Time, because they know. <laughs> they have they know. to know. They know I'm weird. I'm not the only one. There's a lot of cross-section between people who work on the comics and people who were in Smut Peddler. So. <laughs> Imagine that. It's good yeah. to know that you're amongst friends. Yes. Good people. <laughs> so speaking of Adventure Time... I really kicked um, this off, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, this is great, you know? And, and I like that you're just leading me into my next question. I don't even have to skip around questions. This is great. <laughs> So I'm not incredibly familiar with Adventure Time because I've only gotten a chance to watch a little bit of it, but even I know Marceline and the Axe Base, <laughs> which is wonderful. So it begs the question, you know, as a writer, you have to do research. Do you prepare yourself to write by walking around your house just, like, Axe Basing super hard? Thing? Um, I watched all of the Marceline episodes of Adventure Time again um, before I started doing it because I wanted to make sure I wasn't messing up the story. And it's hard, you know, there's still going to be things that, you know, it's five seasons of continuity, and there can be things that slip through the cracks, but it's a show that I love. And, you know, Marceline is a character that, I mean, I was a goth teen. I wore that stuff. I was, like, you know, really, really into sad, dark things. And... You know, if Marceline as a character had existed when I was 15, I would have had stickers of her all over my binders at school. Um, I had Emily the Strange, which is like the Marceline of my era. Um, no, so I don't know. I think I just, um, I think I tried to just channel my inner, my inner teen goth self, bring her back. Does it give you little warm fuzzies inside to think about like current day 15 year old yous? reading this book yeah. and being like, eee! <laughs> I have, like, I mean, everybody has daydreams. I mean, if you're an actor, you're like, oh, what would I have as my Oscar speech or whatever? And me, it's literally, like, being behind a table at a convention and having some super awkward 12-year-old in way too much eyeliner with, like, sock 
wristbands. Just oh, I like, still have my sock wristbands. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and just being like, this book is amazing, or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> or whatever. That's my dream. And then walking away and going, ee! Oh my yeah, god, exactly. So like, but not until they walk away. You're shot because she has no social skills because that was me as a teenager. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, so, you know, knowing how much hard work it was to write this longer running story, do you, has this spurned an interest in other creator owned projects in the future? Absolutely. Um, this sort of comes into uh, the territory we like to call non disclosure agreement, but I will say there are things happening. And it's going to be great. And I, I am continuing to explore writing. And I'm so stoked for this next year. And you'll just have to wait and find out. <laughs> all right, all right. I love things. <laughs> I hate non-disclosure agreements. I can't keep my own secrets. I get so excited. Um, but, I mean, I can because I want to have a job. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, jobs are good. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, speaking of things that are already out, that aren't a secret, uh, today, actually, the Midas Flesh number three variant cover that you did came out, and it's lovely, and hopefully my shop will save me one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> so do you have... If you now, don't, I have a couple, and I can bring one to Texas, so, ooh, yeah. That might be a thing. I'll check, and I'll get back with you. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, so... I would really like to see, I think it would be awesome to see, like, sort of like how Scotty Young does all the new Marvel titles. I would love to see a Kate or Die variant series for, like, Image or something. Are there ever, are there comics that you look at and you're just like, I would love to do a variant cover for this. Sex Criminals. Yes. I would do anything <laughs> for Sex Criminals, which is a sentence that I wish I hadn't said, but, <laughs> oh, man. Like, you have no idea. I love that series more than anything in the world. And there are some, like, I love doing those tattoo designs. And the Midas Flesh one is kind of weird for me because I was working on a really tight deadline on that one. And I did it in Illustrator. And almost everything I do, other than, like, the embroidered patches I design, um, I do by hand. So it was kind of a weird experience. And I sort of wish I'd had a little more time with it. Um, you know, I'm pretty. I'm happy with how it turned out, and it was a, a huge learning experience in that program. But you know, I, I almost kind of wish I'd done it by hand. Um, but I would love to do a bunch of tattoo variants. I mean, be in Puppycat. I I hope something happens with that. Um, you know, so many different boom properties. Regular show. <laughs> I really want to work on regular show. <laughs> but in that actually, Marvel, man, I would do anything for Captain Marvel. That's like. Yes. So good. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that sort of funnels me into uh, Leia at Keith's Comics asks that question, you know, are there any books in, are there any cartoon universes that you just watch and you really want to draw? Well, I want to write Clone High. Like, more than anything, I want to write a Clone High comic. I have a full, like, at least six issue arc in my head of what I would do with it. I love that series. I've watched it a thousand times, and there's no comic of it. I know there's a lot of issues with licensing, but oh man, I dream. Um, so yeah, that's something I would want to work on, like, yeah. really strongly. <laughs> yeah. It'd be amazing. So let's talk about your, your webcomic for a minute. Um, your comic deals with, you know, Cater Die deals with a lot of very very intimate and personal issues, you know, self-confidence, sexism, politics. Um, you pretty much wear your heart on a piece of paper that then gets put on the internet. I don't understand. <laughs> but but it, it affects people on a, a very personal level, particularly women. Do you ever find yourself sort of blindsided or shocked by the incredible personal response that you get from some of the things that you've drawn or written? I do. Um, I think... I mean, the strongest and, it, and I think most personal responses I've ever gotten have been to comics I've done about self-injury, um, just because it's just not a thing that's tackled in a not after-school special kind of way very often. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm pretty straightforward about it. I mean, it's something that I've struggled with since I was 11, probably. I was really young, 
and you know, I have trouble dealing with anger and I take it out on myself. I still struggle with that. Um, but it was one of these things that like, I try to make comics, I think, on subjects that I don't see reflected in the media that I'm observing, if you know what I mean? You know, yeah. the songs that I listen to and the movies that I watch, like, I don't see people talking about something, so I want to talk about it. Because um, I don't want to go over and over a topic that's been beaten to death. But when it comes to that, um, I don't know, people tend to get very clinical or just, yeah, after school especially about it. <laughs> I don't know how else to phrase it. Um, but I think the fact that I struggled with it and through it and kind of over it for so long, um, you know, I, I kind of want to share that and hopefully help somebody else because it was something that I, you know, fought with for over a decade. So, yeah, and, and people come out in droves when you sort of open that out, and especially where I have a, a pretty large audience on the internet, you know, so... Every time I post a comic about something like that, it's crazy. Like, I, I'm flooded with responses, and I try and get back to everybody, but um, it's it's wonderful at the, at the same time as it is sad, because people are just like, oh my god, someone's actually talking about this, which is, is wonderful to be talking about it, but at the same time, it's like, oh man, because nobody's talking about this. <laughs> Why is it such a big deal that I'm talking about this? More yeah. people should be talking about this. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's the same thing when, you know, when it comes to sexuality and when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's aspects of it that just aren't... I like to talk about things that... <laughs> Sometimes I say, like, I like to make comics about the things that if I'm in a group of friends and I start talking about it and my friends all start playing with their phones because they're uncomfortable, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's a comic. <laughs> this should be on the site tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that's great, too, because I sort of felt that way, um, you know, your strip that you do with Comics Alliance, uh, when you when you wrote the strip about uh, women being harassed, and, you know, particularly in a professional setting, it was sort of like, you know, on the Valkyries page, there was a lot of conversation about it, and there was a lot of conversation sort of in, in the media, or in the, the, the news media about it, but I felt like it was really well said, and really well put together in your strip and how brave it is to be somebody who's in that industry working with other professionals who have different opinions on the subject. It's definitely controversial and it was very admirable how it was just like, this is how I feel. This is what I have to say about it. Yeah, Scared that up. one uh, that one was scary to do. Um, I mean, the Comics Alliance thing is, is new to me. I mean, we've done eight strips now, um, uh, but... You know, it's it's a it's a bigger audience. Like I've got an audience online, but Comics Alliance is a pretty big website. A lot of people read it and go to it, and a lot of people who wouldn't normally find my comics end up there. So it's been a little scary, but um, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. And you know, that was I think when I made that strip. Obviously, the stuff with Brian Wood, like that was all in the news, and, and everybody was talking about it. But everybody was talking about it in this kind of abstract way where nobody wanted to say anything that was going to jeopardize their career. Professional standing. Yeah. yeah. And it was the same with me. I mean, I don't want to... I don't know the guy. I don't know any of the women involved personally. You know, so I didn't want to say, this guy did this, because the guy wasn't there. But at the same time, you know, you want to talk about the core of the issue. You want to talk about what's behind that. Like, not the specific event, but that leering sort of creepiness yeah. <laughs> that you feel like you're not allowed to address and you do kind of have to like, you know, quietly whisper to a friend, like, oh, don't deal with that guy, when that shouldn't be what, you know, who the onus is on. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing that's happening and this is a thing that needs to be discussed because professionally it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the Comics Alliance strips that you're doing, what separates those from the strips that you do for Cater Die? Um, I think it's divided them a little bit because with Cater Die, I mean, that's never been a regular thing. I mean, obviously anybody who follows <laughs> it knows I'll have to take three comics in a week and then nothing for two months because there's so much going on. <laughs> One out of three blurbs at the end of, of the cartoon is like, I'm sorry, I've been missing, I'm not dead. Yeah, always. It's like, hi, I'm still here. Um, but... You know, because people would give me all these things, like, if you want to have a successful webcomic, you have to 
have a set date that you update and you have to stick within, you know, a particular size and style. And I just was like, nope, <laughs> I'm going to do a comic whenever I feel like it. Or, or yeah. I could. <laughs> Look different every time and be in extremely varying levels of uh, quality. But, um, you know, with Comics Alliance, uh, they want me to stay within the topic of kind of geek culture and you know, the industry, comics, movies that are related to, you know, people who are reading Comics Alliance, things that they would be interested in. And I'm in comics 24-7, so it's not that hard. Um, where I find my stuff is almost becoming more strictly about personal life and personal relationships and not really related to geek culture because I have that other outlet. You know, so it's uh, it's separating a little bit, and it's also why Cater Die doesn't update as much anymore. Gotcha. gotcha. Well, you're only one person. Yeah. Who does a million and a half things. I do a few things. <laughs> Sleep is for the week. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> um, so how did the how did the strip with Comics Alliance come about? Um. God, I think the first time it was ever mentioned, I went down to stay at Betty Felon, you know, Betty Felon, um, <laughs> one of the, the Illuminati of geek women on the internet. Yes! Um, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm just so excited just mentioning her name. <laughs> I love her to death. She's one of my favorite people in the world. And um, I went to stay with her in Boston um, God, to see, like, the Dresden Dolls, or Amanda Palmer a couple of years ago or something. I can't even remember why I was there, but um, we sat on her floor going through all the things she had bought at San Diego Comic-Con, and she was like, oh, yeah, you know, you should write for Comics Alliance. And then I never heard anything about it for a year and a half, and um, then finally, yeah, Andy from, from Comics Alliance just emailed me and asked if I'd be interested working with them, and it was a good time and a good fit, and... You know, it's nice. So it just worked out really well because I love their website. And I know a bunch of the people that work for them. And I didn't want to work for, um, like, I think if I was going to do one for any site, it was just going to be them because Comics Alliance is so positive. And mm -hmm. it's not a website where everyone's, like, just tearing things up and crapping all over them. You know, it's it's mostly a positive and a fairly feminist website. So, yeah. yeah did you have, like, an outlandishly animated reaction when you got the email? No, I was excited. Um, but, you know, because we had talked about it so long ago when I was working with Comics Bulletin um, for a little while, which sort of petered out because I got too busy, and it was also not a paying job, so I had to kind of be like, okay, I need to prioritize things that are actually financially lucrative. Um and, uh, yeah, then when it came with Comics Alliance, they were like, hey, you can do comics for us, and we'll pay you. I was like, <laughs> yes, boy, howdy. <laughs> what a business model. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there is something I came across today, um, and, and I had seen it before, but I had to ask, um, having now actually read some Archie, uh, naughty Archie, Oh my god, can this be a thing? Like, I really feel like there's a thing here. There are some issues that really need to be discussed. I could talk about Archie for, like, <laughs> forever. I grew up on those comics. Um, Archie was one of my first comics. They were my first... I was always a Betty kid. I mean, screw Veronica, right? Except now that I'm older, it's the same as when you have a renewed appreciation for Cordelia Chase, right? First time yeah. you watch Buffy, you're like, screw Cordelia. And then the second time you watch it, you're like, oh, I feel for her. Maybe yeah. that's just me. But, um, no, I... <laughs> but as you get older, the more you think about Archie in a real-world universe, like, this is a dude who is dating and presumably sleeping with, because there are definitely some times where they're, like, at lookout point or whatever, two girls who know about each other and are best friends, like, that's messed up. You don't know anybody <laughs> like that, or very few people. I mean, they're obviously very good and working polyamorous relationships out there. Yeah. I'm not saying it couldn't work, but in that situation, I but mean... Like, and not only that, he's pursuing 
other people, like other women, aggressively all of the time. And like sometimes Betty and Veronica are dating Reggie, and sometimes they're dating other guys. And it's like, man, <laughs> high school needs like five sex ed classes because what are you doing? <laughs> Can you imagine the nurse's office? At the at Riverdale, just like running out of condoms left and right. Like, can you imagine what it's like to be their school nurse? Yeah. <laughs> because well. I'm like, try just try and imagine you and your best friend dating and sleeping with the same guy, but like you hate each other over that, but you're also going shopping together all the time. That sounds like imagining where to bury a body. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a teenage crime of passion. <laughs> like, I can't believe Betty or Veronica did not murder Archie. Because that would have happened. There is there is a love knifing scenario. Or each other. Yeah. They're all all around. I mean, I feel like there's I feel like somebody needs to hop on this horror movie and and, and you know, kudos to Afterlife with Archie for seeing the horror That's potential. Amazing. Afterlife with Archie is incredible. It is everything that I would have wanted. As oh, a Francesco's going to be at Staple in, like, two weeks. Aww. Two weeks. Tell him I said hi. I will. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. But, I mean, really, I feel like there is a horror movie scenario with this Archie situation. Just Afterlife really with Archie crazy. had incest and lesbians within, like, the first two issues it, it's wonderful. It's so amazing. <laughs> Next season on American Horror Story. <laughs> yes! 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 And I think somebody, somebody already quoted me on Twitter as saying, I would do anything for sex criminals. <laughs> it, it took longer than I thought, to be honest with you. Kind of great. <laughs> That's okay. There were like... There were so many things I said during that Chip Zdarsky interview that I was like, oh, son of a bitch, if somebody took this out of context and sent it to my mother. I watched that entire thing in real time. It was amazing. <laughs> it was mind-blowing. I was like, I am going to doof up any minute now. This is I am so excited to meet Chip at uh, Emerald City. I really hope we become best friends, and if we don't, that's the end of my life. So, you know. Well, that's going to be awkward since we're all engaged to him, so... <laughs> But man, I am at Emerald City Comic Con. I am doing like Urban Pictionary. So you basically the person will give a title of an act described in Urban Dictionary, and one of us has to draw it. And it's me, Ryan North, David Malky, Erica Moen, and Chip Zdarsky. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like, Prints available for purchase, please. I'm Thank so you. excited. <laughs> uh, in every interview I've done this week, I realized how often I say I'm so excited. Because apparently I'm always excited. Uh, but that is going to be amazing. I am like, when I got the email about it, I just, that, okay, even more than Comics Alliance. They're like, do you want to do Dirty Pictionary with all of your favorite cartoonists? And I was like, why did you ask me? Why would you even ask me that question? Go ahead, RSVP, yes. Pen me in. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be right after my all ages panel on Comics for Children. Absolutely. Appropriately. <laughs> Yep, I think you both. <laughs> so one of, you know, very recently you drew, uh, you had your birthday and you drew a strip about looking back on yourself ten years ago, five years ago. Um, with this particular spring season being the look forward, I mean, how does that make you feel to think of everything that you've done, everything that you have accomplished, and to be looking into the future and being so excited that your face is physically sore at the end <laughs> of those days? Um, it's kind of crazy. I mean, there are things lined up into 2015 for me right now, and that's insane. Um, you know, I'm working on bigger and more massive projects than I ever would have expected. I'm being asked to do things that I'm just like, how? <laughs> um, and it's nuts because, you know, I, I only started into comics a little over three years ago. I had only read Archie up until 2010, so and I'd never drawn a comic, and now I wrote a book for Adventure Time. So, you know, I, I find myself ex incredibly lucky. I know I work really hard, but at the same time, I have been afforded a lot of really awesome opportunities. And, like, in 2008 and 2009, like, I was a college dropout living in the crappiest apartment in the shadiest part of town, 
and just like drinking and doing nothing with my life. Um, and comics kind of gave me everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and it's so awesome to feel like I found what I want to do and that I'm good at it. Like, I feel like that's all anybody wants to find, you know? Yeah, it's like the dream, the dream of life that so few people actually even get close enough to touching. Yeah, it's crazy. And I have a lot of work to do and a long way to go, but my dreams just keep getting higher and, you know, keeps sussing them out. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about the Valkyries. The Valkyries. Of course I do. Okay. Um, so what's been really cool is, in, and going back to when I talked to Chip Zdarsky, like it was really awesome to say the Valkyries and somebody not be like, huh, Who, what are you talking about? Somebody's like, yeah, I know who the Valkyries are. I've heard of the Valkyries. How does it make you feel when you go to conventions, when you go to expos, and these writers and these artists and these publishers are buzzing about this group you created? I love it. I think it is incredible. And I can't even express, like, when Juliet, um, in our group, when she said, you know, her and her coworker went to uh, Image Expo, and they were wearing their Valkyries shirts, and they met Kelly Sue and Matt Fraction, and they were, like, over the moon about it, and Matt literally said to her, and I know you know this already, but was like, you know, thank you for making my wife so happy, and thank you for making this thing that makes her so happy. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, and, but it's not even that. But, like, yeah, it, it gets some recognition. I When I was at New York Comic Con, and that was even in earlier days of Valkyries, because it's grown hugely in the last couple months. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I went to the retailer breakfast with Skybound, and there were a bunch of other retailers there, and, like, more than half of them had heard of us, or and a couple of them had members that were in our group. And that was really awesome. I really feel like Tyler Durden sometimes, <laughs> and I like it. That is wonderful. That's a it's really cool. good comparison, too. I like it. It's nice for, I mean, like, when people first started hearing about it, you know, there was a lot of joking about it, like, oh, you know, watch out, when there were, like, 40 of us. And now it's <laughs> and like... Now it's like 170 of us, and we have exclusive uh, previews from like seven different publishers at least, and like people are taking us seriously. And yeah, then you really should watch out. <laughs> it means a lot to me. You know, I wanted to band together because I, I think you will agree. I mean, you have Lisa, and, and you know, every one of us has like maybe a female coworker or someone else we know that works in a comic shop in our city, but it is kind of an isolated position in terms of retail. You know, yeah. they're you're a girl in a comic shop, you have a very unique experience, and maybe you only have like one or two other people you can talk to about that that really get it, you know? And so now we have this group of, you know, 170 of us that get it, and uh, it's awesome. Well, and it's really cool because, like, Austin Books and Comics is like, I mean, almost half the staff is, are ladies. Like, we have See, a that's awesome. Of I didn't, I didn't yeah. know for sure. We have a ton of ladies on staff, which is really cool, but at the same time, you know, you and, and it's even better because you get on the internet and you start talking, you know, you get into that geekosphere and you start talking about all the newest things that are coming out and, and what you're excited about reading, and it's like, dude, 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 dude. It's like, oh. And yeah. then there's the boundaries, and you start to make friends and network with these other women who do what you do and may not have half their staff, uh, you know, ladies. So it's... It's amazing how many of us there are out there and how many people and how many of us there are out there who are not part of the group yet because we haven't made it that far. And yeah. that's pretty mind blowing. And that's crazy to me too. I mean, even to think about it and like I had a couple of people when we when I made that map public of the Valkyries and I got this response which was just like, Oh my god, there are so many of you and I'm like, Yeah, only half the group has actually put themselves on that map. You know, yeah. there's lots of people that haven't done it or can't figure out Google Maps or which I understand is very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while, not gonna lie. Yeah, no, same. And I made it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes <you> so much better. <laughs> I don't understand it. Um, but not to prove a stereotype or anything. <laughs> that none of us girls can work technology. Which is <laughs> not true. Um, but no, I mean it's 
it's really awesome, and it feels like such a wicked girl power society, and everybody's so cool, and it's really diverse. You know, it's not all the same kind of person. It's it's people from all different ages and all different places and all kinds of different things, and and reading tons of different stuff. That's you know. pretty cool. Yeah, it's, you know, there's people in the group that are really into the superhero stuff. There's that huge quotient that's really into rat queens, and, and, like, everybody's got different things, and, you know, I would love for, to get, like, the, the, someone from DC and someone from Marvel and, like, someone from Image for just one day to, like, have access to that message board. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> just right. see everything that's going on, you know. Well, it's really powerful. So What'd you say? It's because we're powerful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's really interesting to hear everybody. We When we were filling out the... When I sent out the questionnaire for the Valkyrie of the Fortnite, and I was like, hey, fill this out, answer these questions. And I had one of the girls send me a private message, and she was like, well, you know, I live, I live in the UK, and, you know, a lot of the books that I'm reading aren't what all the other girls are reading, and I'm really self-conscious about, you know, sharing my answers. I don't, I don't want people to not be into what I'm saying. And I'm like, look... You're reading something totally different? Yes, fill it out, fill it out now. You're now required to fill it out. It was yeah. a choice. It's not anymore. <laughs> yeah. We want different. We want diversity. It's so cool. Yeah. I get really excited when there are people who join from other countries, you know? There's a couple girls in Australia and, and a couple in the UK, and, like, that is really exciting to me because I want there to be more diversity and I want more markets represented. You know, I don't want it to all be, like, white 20-somethings from, like, <laughs> you know, the coastal cities in America. Um, I want it to be more diverse, and I like it. We've got some teenagers in the group. There's a couple of girls that are, like, 15 and 16, and then there's the managers of stores who are in their 40s and 50s, and, like, you know, it's, it's, that is more important to me, to be, to be more diverse. And, you know, when you're dealing with social media, obviously you're going to be a appealing to and reaching you know, people in our age group more readily, which is why I want to go to shows and have, like, business cards and stuff like that, you know, to reach more people. Um, but it's been neat because I've actually had people traveling or people going to comics shows or things like that who've been recommended to the Valkyries by someone else, um, you know, or heard about the group and sort of sought it out, which is awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so... Ashley at Newberry Comics in Massachusetts asked if you had ever, you know, considered making a Valkyrie comic series, which I think poses a very interesting question. You know, when you think about the Valkyries in the future, what kind of things do you imagine us doing in the future? What goals do you have for the group? <sighs> goals that I'm not sure I will ever have the time for. <laughs> well, yes, of course. <laughs> There's never enough time. Assigning people to things or learning how to give up some control. Um, which I, I have done a little bit, um, you know, and I, and I want to more and more. Um, but, you know, I would love to see us have more of a presence, like a blog updated by maybe a couple different members with, like, recommendations or, you know, photos in, in our shops. I mean, we have the Valkyrie of the Fortnite. That was kind of the first step. Um, I'd love to do something like a video blog with different girls, um, talking about comics news or books or, you know, whatever. Like, I would I would love to have more of an interactive kind of a presence, um, but I feel like it's something that I'm going to have to collaborate with people because I, I don't know how to do some of it, and the other part is not having the time. <laughs> Understandable. Mm -hmm. so, now, as far, as far as the Valkyrie's comic series goes, I, I don't really know even how I would approach that. I'd like to do Valkyrie variants on comics. <laughs> I'd like to start there. That would be wonderful. Yeah. I have some thoughts about that. <laughs> we need to talk about that. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, so a lot of folks that are watching this, the Valkyries page is a is a private page. So it's something that you know you can only see if you are a Valkyrie. What is a day in the life of the Valkyries page? for those who don't really know about what we usually talk about? Well, basically, um, like I said a couple times, there's a whole bunch of girls, women um, from all over the world, 
in it and communicating. So, you know, like this morning, someone posted the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, first thing. Obviously, that's going to be a topic of conversation. Um, uh, you know, whenever comics news happens, I mean, everyone's on their phones or on Facebook at some point during the day, so someone catches it first. You know, they announce a new title or something gets canceled or someone's announced on a new project. You, I mean, you've seen that'll get posted and people discuss it. Um, you know, people talk about it's a good place to vent if something has happened to you. It's a good place to recommend new series. Um, you know, you do every week posting, you know, what are you looking forward to? And that can be really awesome because I got a bunch of people checking out the Midas Flesh, which made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I mean, we just started getting some of those previews from different retailers of upcoming series, so we'll talk about those. Um, you know, conventions, cosplay, people organizing rides, people who are visiting other cities, you know, checking out which Valkyries live there to come see their shops. It's really, it's, I mean, pretty varied. Yeah. I think I always really like that, too, the idea of being able to go to a different city and find a comic book shop based on, you know, your your co or your fellows that are working there and being able to just go in and visit and be treated like a regular. It was so cool. I mean, I went to Tampa, and I was staying in, like, middle of nowhere outside of Tampa, and then the guys that I, well, one of the guys I was staying with in a friend of his, we went to um, their comic shop, and the second time we went, I heard um, one of my friends talking to one of the girls about the Valkyries, and she's like, oh, yeah, I'm in that. <laughs> and so Marcia calls me over, and I'm like, what? She's like, I'm, I'm Kari. I'm like, you are the Valkyries. I know your name. Um, and it hasn't happened a couple times where I've been traveling and been in a comic book store, and I'm like, hey, you know, I have this group. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you can't remember. Man, 170 people, I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. That's insane. I know. It's so cool. <laughs> So in your webcomic, you you know you're very clear about you know double standards against women and problems that you perceive in your day to day life with how we treat each other and how we communicate. Do you feel like the conversations and the interactions that we have in the Valkyries sort of is a positive step in the right direction to those kinds of things? I absolutely think so. I mean, I was really worried when the group started that it would turn into like a bitch fest and everyone would just be complaining <laughs> about customers or comics. There but are days. <laughs> there are days because <laughs> terrible things happen, right? And, and it's, but it's so nice to have a support group that gets it. Yeah. And I think we all really appreciate that. Um, I know I do all the time. Um, but, you know, it, it completely isn't that all the time. It's really overwhelmingly positive and everyone is very supportive of each other, and everyone's always coming up with these awesome little projects and things like that, completely separate from me, and that's really cool. You know, it's its own little entity now, and, and that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's such a positive thing. I feel like I wanted it to be a force to be reckoned with, and I think it's really making strides towards that. <laughs> To say, like, you know, you can say, you know, girls don't read comics or girls don't work in comic book shops, but we got an army. <laughs> <laughs> and there are people that, like, when I post about the Valkyries, I see people reblogging and being like, man, I wish I could be in that. You know, oh, this makes me feel better about going to a comic book store or wanting to work at a comic book store. I'm just like, yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wanted to be a girl gang to look up to. <laughs> so, one of the other things that happens a lot on the Valkyrie site that I feel like has started to happen a lot more since the Valkyrie started are ladies' nights. And you're going to be our guest at Austin Books Ladies' Night, Thursday night, the 27th. It starts at 7 p.m. I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you a secret, Danny. I'm doing a signing at Austin Books and Comics. At 5 o'clock on the Wednesday, right? Or 5.30? Yeah. Yeah, my plane gets in at 3.45, and I will have been awake since 3 in the morning. Awesome! <laughs> With I think two I connections and, like, at least 10 hours flying, 
So I'm sorry in advance if I am a bag of garbage. <laughs> oh, no, it'll be wonderful. I think I'm picking you up from the airport. Would you like a cupcake or something? I'm sure. No, it should work with coffee. Oh, coffee for sure. Coffee, definitely coffee. Yes. I can do coffee. I'm very good at coffee. I love coffee. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, no, ladies' nights are the best. And I'm so excited because I'm doing like three of them while I'm there, or at least two, because there's one with you guys, and there's Keith's Comics. Yeah. I think they're late, they're letting guys in because I'm only going to be there for one night, and that would be kind of not fair. Because um, yeah. you need to, everyone needs to be able to see me. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> in all my glory. Um, no, but yeah. So I, I was just wanted to make sure everybody could come if they wanted to. Um, and then, yeah, and doing an event at More Fun Comics and Games as well on after the conference on Saturday, I think. So have you guys done a, a Ladies' Night at Strange Adventures yet? Hell yeah! We started Ladies' Nights. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to my first Ladies' Night at Strange Adventures probably five years ago. Um, they, they did them before I worked there, like a there had been a before I started working there. Um, and I went, and I remember being like, this is the coolest thing I've ever attended. <laughs> I was so excited. And then once I started working at Strange Adventures, um, I was sort of in charge of them. And uh, I've run them for the last couple of years, and we're doing another one in April. Um, the date is not 100% set yet because I'm traveling like a person that travels a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm traveling a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we're doing another one here and uh, we have another store in Fredericton in uh, New Brunswick and we're hoping to do one there on the 15th of March. So. So do you have any advice for ladies who are out there who don't maybe don't have Valkyries who work at their shop or work at their local comic book shop who want to who, who want to do a ladies night? Any thoughts on that? Get a job at your comic book shop, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everyone has a Valkyrie. Time. Come on. We have one of us. Um, no, uh, there are. I mean, if you frequent a comic book shop that has female stock, it's obviously a lot easier. Um, I've dealt with another comic book shop within Canada that wanted to have me come up for a ladies' night, but they didn't have any other female staff. It kind of fell through because you need somebody there who can run the cash, who can, you know, who knows where everything is. Obviously, somebody who kind of knows their way around the shop. And, you know, two is preferable because they get really busy. But, um, you know, because that, so that didn't really work out. But, I mean, we, there, I, just tell them success stories, right? I mean, sales is what matters to a lot of people that own comic book stores. You know, if you know that something like that has an audience, you know that it can bring people in, you know that it's going to sell books, I mean, start with that. Because that's money talks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for folks who are out there who want to do what you do, who want to create their own comics or want to do their own webcomic, what kind of advice do you have for them? Spend all of your time on the internet. <laughs> I swear, I, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday who was like, I don't get Twitter. I just don't. It feels like a waste of time. And I was like, because of Twitter, I work for Adventure Time. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, the internet makes it so easy for you to get your content out to people. And especially with social media and websites like Pinterest and Tumblr and Twitter, where you can create something and you know get it out there and like really push it, and it can find an audience. Um, even Project Wonderful, like if you have a web comic and you're not really based off of Tumblr or you don't want to use Tumblr, things like that almost work like web rings used to do. Let me date myself back to GeoCities, um, where you know that's built off of you can advertise for your webcomic on other webcomics and you can pick which webcomics and Project Wonderful is really awesome that way and I use it for advertising on my site too so you can advertise on sites that you think are relevant to you um, which is really cool and it's pretty inexpensive it's got a neat little system I totally don't understand but it seems to work and um, I don't know I mean don't give up I, the, the thing with me is I understand the limitations of my artistic ability 
I know that my comics are not the most beautiful things in the world, but You're wonderful. Yeah, but I'm not Becky Cloonan. Like I can't. There's things I can't draw. I know that. I don't. I don't. It's not me like making fun of myself. It's just me being like very self-aware. I get it, but I'm very good at promoting myself, and I'm very good at being like, maybe this sucks, but I'm gonna put it out there anyway. And it's a lot harder if you look at what you do and you're so self-conscious about it that you can't put it out there. You know, if you draw everything and you never put it online or you never take it to a show or you never expose anybody to it, you're not going to find an audience, even if you're amazing. So, you know, just uh, just be a shameless self-promoter. I sort of have this feeling like... Um or I've always had this feeling like a real artist is just a person who will sit there and look at the best thing they've made and be like, well, I wish I could have done it differently this way or this way or this way. Like, yeah. you're never going to be oh, happy. I'm like that with everything. <laughs> yeah, just like forget, give up on being happy with or being totally, perfectly happy with whatever you create because if you're, if you're totally happy with it and you think it's the best thing ever, you might want to go back and look at it again. <laughs> it's just, I think that's part of being like, I don't I don't feel that way about anything that I've done. I mean, there are comics of mine that I have slowly and quietly like taken off my website or tried to take out of circulation because I'm like, oh, that was bad. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think I'm able to sort of look past it and go, you know what, I'm going to get better. Might as well have people along for the ride um, and just put it out there. And, you know, post it to relevant websites. Like, Tumblr makes it really easy. You draw Batman. You tag it with Batman. People who like Batman will see your picture. And if they like it, they will follow you, maybe. You know? Yeah. Fan is great for building an audience. And then you can push your original content, and it's too late because they're already there, and they have to see it. <laughs> well, and that's one of the things that I really like about your comic strip is it very openly discusses the detriment that you know, constantly being down on yourself and, and not giving yourself the the proper amount of confidence to just put it out there. I mean, you do talk about that, and that's really important, I think, to send that message to, and especially if you're thinking about, like, I mean, when did you when did you start drawing and writing strips? Comic strips? Um, early, late 2010, early 2011. So, yeah, about three years. Okay. And you started drawing... How long before that? I mean, have you just always been drawing? Oh, yeah. Just always, like, on and off. I wasn't, but, like, you know, I would doodle. I never, yeah. I didn't do huge stuff. Um, I did a couple drawing classes when I was at art school, like, drawing and painting and photography. So I'm going to have a little bit of a formal background, but I did drop out, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I retook the same drawing class three times because I hated my teacher the first two times. <laughs> <laughs> That's always really rough. It's hard to learn something from somebody who you just don't get the connection with, but get along with. it's, you know, I feel like a lot more, particularly girls, you know, young girls would be, would be encouraged to do these things and to get out there and promote their own work or these doodles or these drawings if there was constantly a presence telling them, like, it doesn't matter if it's perfect, just do it, just go out there and do it. The only way to get better is to just go out there and do it. And that, I think that was given to me, you know, inadvertently by Kate Beaton, because, you know, I loved her stuff, and Joey Kimo, um sent it to me when she was still only publishing on LiveJournal, and was just like, hey, this is a friend of mine, you might think these are funny, and I loved them, and, you know, she got her own website, and she kept getting bigger and bigger, and she had no formal training. I mean, she drew comics for the Argosy when she was at... Um, a local university, and she just did it, you know, and, and I looked at that and was like, oh my god, like, I don't have to have a degree from SVU, I can just make comics, and that, you know, like, just seeing her do it and put stuff out there, and it wasn't, like, they weren't these amazing, perfect, rendered drawings, but the expression and the heart and the humor was so fresh and not over calculated and I remember just being like yeah okay she can do that I can do my own thing and you know I, I, I thank her a lot for that even you know if she didn't know what she was doing she was just putting it out there but you know I sat there in my house and went 
okay, I'll scan this drawing. <laughs> I'll put it and up. And then you get to be somebody else's Kate Beeson, and that's awesome. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. It was like, I, I felt weirdly like the cycle was complete when, I mean, I have a tattoo of Kate Beaton's Wonder Woman on the back of my arm because, you know, I wanted to get something to be like, to represent, you know, you were the person who gave me the courage to do this. It sounds really cheesy, but it's true. Um, and then a girl who followed me on Tumblr got a tattoo of my, like, sexy Spider-Man. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, man, it's paying it forward. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it was really awesome. She has it on her bicep. It's really cool. Oh, that's so great to have to have your artwork on somebody's body forever. That's so cool. So flattering. There are like at least fifteen people in the world that have tattoos of stuff I've drawn, and it's crazy. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's super flattering. I love it. Well, so what are you what are you working on that you have upcoming that doesn't break the uh, non-disclosure rule that you're really excited about that we haven't touched on? Um, there's very it. little that I can talk about right now. Um, I I'm doing more writing. I can say that I'm writing some larger things. Um, <laughs> I love this game. Tell us things without telling us anything. <laughs> I'm doing work for a different publisher as well. Um, some of that should be announced like pretty soon. Um, I'm conti continuing on in several different elements my newfound tradition of writing for dudes to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's more coming. It's, it's less small sporadic projects and more big projects, so you won't hear as much, but, uh, I mean, you can expect the usual more covers and art with Boom and with Adventure Time and those guys, because I love them and I'll just keep doing it. Um, I did, uh, oh, I did the badge for the Carol Quartz meetup. Is it Carol Core or Carol Quartz? Because I've never actually heard it out loud. I've always said core. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, because that's how the word is pronounced. Yeah. But, okay, so Carol Core. Because um, I feel like when you're Carol Core. Um, yeah. Anyway, they're doing a big meetup at uh, Emerald City Comic Con, and I designed the badge for that. So that was pretty cool. And I'm designing some more badges, and, you know may or may not have done some things in relation to Lumberjanes. Who knows? <laughs> uh, you know, I really wanted to ask about that, but I thought it might be one of those can't talk about it things. It was like, so, Lumberjanes. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate this game. I'm terrible. It's so I terrible. I hate it, too. Oh, it too. why must we always do this sick dance with one another, Kate? Sick I don't know. <laughs> You know, something else will be public knowledge in a couple weeks, and right. that'll be really exciting. That is yeah. a little satisfying. It's so terrible. I hate it. I got into webcomics because I'm into instant satisfaction. <laughs> Put it out there. I get a response. Well, these now comics like, are going to learn you your lesson good. Months. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> the longest wait on anything was that Fiona and Kate cover that I did, because I drew that, like six or seven months before it came out. It was horrible. <laughs> oh. Just waiting for that to exist. But, uh, yeah. Oh, what a bummer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I did that cover for Minus Flesh that came out today. I did some doodles that were in the one that came out. Last month, I did that strip for um, the Catbug Annual for Bravest Warriors. I did that cover for the Night Vale podcast that came out last week, um, which was really exciting. Because I love working with Nightvale. They're the best people ever. And, uh, yeah, just starting to get ready for Texas and then for Megacon and Emerald City. So, yeah. Crazy. Well, this is a really, really big year for Kate. Um, if you are doing the con circuit this year and you're going to a few other places, so where can we find more information about where you're going to be over the course of 2014? Because a lot of viewers do not live here in the great state of Texas. 
Um, well, I, uh, on my website, on caterdiecomics.com, which you can also get to through kateleth.com, thanks to my boss buying that for me, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a little list on the sidebar of all my sort of upcoming appearances. Um, the Ladies' Night in Fredericton isn't solidified yet. I'm still waiting to confirm with the owner of that shop. Should be up in the next couple days. Um, and then the Ladies' Night in Halifax, which is going to be in April. We just have to set the date for sure, because we were going to have it on April 4th, but a little thing called Winter Soldier comes out that day. So... What is that? Could you tell me more about that? <laughs> is that a non-disclosure thing? This, uh, no, no, this is not an honest closure thing. That's me <laughs> not wanting to compete with a Captain America premiere. Um, yeah. So we think we're probably going to do it on the Wednesday, because Wednesday is the day. Yeah. Do everything. Know. Yeah. So yeah, that updates whenever new dates or things get announced. MegaCon's going to be weird. I'm not, like, officially tabling there, but I'm going to be at Darwin Cook's table whenever he's not there, and sometimes when he's also there. So... I'm just saddling along to their trip because <laughs> Darwin's a local, and uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna hang out there for a little bit. But I'll have copies of Seek Red, so that'll be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, be sure to check out Cater Die, obviously if you haven't already. Um, but be sure to check out the website and see where she's going to be and how you can support her books. It's about time. For me to feed I'm really mad that you didn't promote uh, propose to me in this one. But I did. It's not legal here in Texas, which is a shame. I disagree with that. I'm not I coming do. to Texas anymore. Oh, <laughs> I'm not coming to Texas anymore. No, You're no, no. You're I said the wrong thing. Good. Well, Texas. Guess what? Yeah, I made out with the lady last night. <laughs> Deal with it. Oh. Deal with it. No, you know what? Texas, be damned. Kate Leth, will you marry me? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're also marrying Chip. This is like the biggest marriage ever. I love this party. What? Can you imagine the house we're all going to have to live in? It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. And you know what we should do is we should buy it right near San Diego Comic-Con and then just like rent it out to people. That's how we make our great. Yeah. Well, we need to have one of those like real, like a library with one of those really tall rooms with one of like the rolling... Uh, don't even get me started on rolling ladders, all right? <laughs> that is like an old, lustful desire of mine. <laughs> well, clearly this marriage is in the cards. <laughs> I found your weakness. <laughs> Spiral staircases and rolling ladders, man. We go way back. Books everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well... I'm Danny Danger. This has been our interview with Kate Leth for Weird Girls. Be sure to check out weird-girls.com where we do more stuff like this. We've also got Valkyrie of the Fortnite features, also other very cool things. And check out Kate's website so you can get more on top of her comics, what she's doing, where she'll be. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks to me talk loudly.